Hello everyone. Um, recently I reacted to a video by uh, everyone's favourite drama queen in which he featured golden orb weavers and stated that their bites can cause pretty severe effects even going so far as to compare them to a black widow. Now as politely as I can possibly put it, that is a load of shit. Golden orb weavers in fact have a very mild venom and today I am going to get bitten by one and sorry I'm in quite <laughs> I'm in quite a busy area at the moment, so the background noise is pretty hectic. There's planes flying overhead, and now there's a, a police siren. Um, yeah, look, you're just going to have to live with it. So anyway, before we get into the bite, let's take a closer look at this magnificent spider. Well, that was the original introduction, but this video didn't exactly go to plan. I filmed this video intending to prove two points. One, that orb weavers, or just spiders in general, are not something that actually wants to bite humans. They're not out to get you. And also that golden orb weavers have a really mild venom. The problem was the spider was so good at proving the first point that I couldn't even get to the second. So spoiler alert, you're not going to be seeing a spider bite in this video, but that's not for a lack of trying. The spider I'm accompanied with here is Triconephala edulis, one of Australia's three species of golden orb weaver. Here in Brisbane, two species are quite prevalent, this species and Triconephala plumipes. If you've watched my previous Golden Orb Weaver video, then you should be quite familiar with Triconephala plumipes as well. Both of these species can be frequently found cohabiting in very close proximity. And as a result of that, plus their very similar size and appearance, it is quite easy to get the two mixed up. However, at the same time, once you know what you're looking at, you can usually tell them apart without too much issue. Triconephala plumipes is overall darker in colour, and perhaps its most distinctive feature is the bright yellow bands on its legs. One of these bands is located at the tip of the animal's femur, while the other is on the joint between the tibia and the metatarsus. On the contrary, Triconephala edulis is a good deal paler by comparison, and it lacks those gold bands that are so clearly visible in Triconephala plumipes. Furthermore, it also tends to be noticeably more hirsute, in other words, hairy. So even though these two spiders are very similar in habitat and appearance, once you're familiar with some of their key defining features, it's not that difficult to distinguish them. So let's start taking a look at some of my bite attempts and the spider wasn't exactly cooperative in this regard. Now, I did record narration on the spot, however, the background noise was just unbearable. So instead, I've decided to opt for editing in some narration after the fact, cause I'm sure you don't want to listen to an orchestra of lawnmowers and jackhammers in the background. I figured I'd do this bite in the same way as I did for the assassin bug. In other words, wait for the spider to crawl to a uh, desirable spot on my arm and then apply pressure until it bites. Easier said than done. I also chose carefully when it came to exactly where on the spider's body I'd be pressing down. A spider's body is divided into two main sections, the prosoma at the front and the opisthosoma at the rear. The prosoma is protected on the top by a large plate of exoskeleton called the carapace. Meanwhile, the opisthosoma is quite soft and vulnerable. So if I were to press down there, it is entirely possible that I could injure the spider. So of course, I decided to push down on the prosoma.
And here goes the first proper attempt. So as you can clearly see, the spider's fangs are being pressed right up against my skin here. But she is about as keen on biting as all the fish in the ocean are whenever I go fishing. Time for attempt number two. <laughs> well, I guess that's a no. Surely third time's a charm, right? Uh, apparently not. Oh, and by the way, I figured I'd mention this thing as I'm sure someone's going to point this out. The bite that you can see on my arm here is not from the spider. That was a sandfly bite. And yes, sandfly bites seem to be a uh, recurring theme in my videos. I don't know why they like me so much, I've got no meat on me. So that was a pretty anticlimactic video. But I guess I can't be too disappointed because the main message I intended to spread was conveyed pretty clearly and that is that spiders are not out to get humans. They do not want to bite you even when you shove their fangs straight into your arm. Just don't try and test that with a Brazilian wandering spider or funnel web or old world tarantula. And ultimately the purpose of my bite videos, and yes they are going to continue, I've got more bites planned, and stings for that matter, is not to showcase how painful something is because, I mean, you can figure that out for yourself. If you look at a centipede or an assassin bug, you can tell pretty clearly that that's something you don't want to get bitten by. The point of my bite videos is, and always was, to show that these are not animals that actually want to bite humans. They'll just defend themselves if they feel the need to. The centipede gave a whole bunch of dry bites before even bothering to use any venom. and the assassin bug still gave me a warning before biting, even when she was being pinned down into my arm. And then there's this spider, who just, um, just didn't want to bite. So that is the end of this video. If you enjoy my content, then feel free to subscribe, and don't forget to check out some of my other uploads. Plus, let me know what you thought in the comments section as well. Thank you very much for watching, that is it from me and I shall see you again very soon.